On July 20, 1969, the world woke up to the news of the United States of America ascending to the moon. Specifically, the three astronauts who launched the Apollo 11 mission, who are Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, and Neil Armstrong. And the event made a very big noise in the world at the time. And America sat on the throne of the space field, especially since after the Apollo 11 mission, about six human flights to the moon were launched. But the strange thing remained that from then until today all human flights to the moon stopped completely and this in turn raised a set of questions why despite all the scientific progress that we are experiencing today no one has returned to the moon again although the technology and equipment currently available will certainly facilitate the task more than before if we want to understand why there are no human flights to the moon since 1972 then we need to know first why did the Americans even decide that they would travel to the moon the first time? Is it for scientific research and to benefit people, for example? Actually, the answer is no. The main motive that made America seek to send humans to the moon is to prove its superiority over the Soviet Union in front of the whole world. After World War II ended, all sides came out completely exhausted from the war. Of course, the economic situation was completely bad, except for only two countries. America and the Soviet Union. And that is why these two were all the time quarreling over who among them would have sovereignty and domination over the world. Given that the two were on the side of each other during the World War, and the two are among the Allied countries, and they have treaties and agreements, so it was not permissible in any way for them to enter into a military clash with each other. And that's why the idea of the Cold War appeared. And it is that each of them proves that it is superior in all fields over the other country. And among these fields was the space race. In October 1957, the Soviet Union launched the Sputnik 1 satellite and let it orbit the Earth in a low orbit for about three months. This was the first satellite in human history. And it was a very huge event. The Soviets proved that they are technologically superior to the whole world. One month after the launch of the satellite in November of the same year, they put a dog named Leica in a spacecraft and let this vehicle also revolve around the Earth. They put sensors with it to measure the dog's heartbeat, blood pressure, and other needs. The purpose of this matter was that they know the impact of the space environment on living creatures, but they were not satisfied with this. In 1959, they sent a robotic spacecraft called Luna 3. They let it visualize the far side of the moon. This is because from Earth we always see only one side of the moon in an astronomical phenomenon called tidal locking. And after about two years, and specifically in April 1961, the Soviets sent a person inside a spacecraft, who was the pilot Yuri Gagarin, and they also let him revolve around the Earth for about 100 minutes, so that he would remain the first person sent to space in the history of mankind. And yet, and yes, America had some achievements in the space race such as they launched some satellites and sent a chimpanzee in a shuttle and let it revolve around the Earth. But the general scene was clear in which the overwhelming superiority of the Soviet Union. America was in a very weak position and had to do something to change the situation. The achievements that the Soviets made coincided with the beginning of a new presidential term for U.S. President John Kennedy. That's why Kennedy and the Americans needed something strong to restore their confidence in themselves and people's confidence in them. This is what made Kennedy appear in the famous speech of September 12, 1962, and who said we chose to go to the moon. And he asked the government that they support NASA with all the money and equipment that NASA would need to achieve this goal before 1970. The Apollo mission was like life or death for the Americans, and they saw that it was the thing that would restore their prestige in the world, and that's why they wanted to achieve this issue in any way. No matter how much money they spend, they would have endured difficult economic conditions, but the project succeeded. The Apollo mission was America's national project. That is why if we come to see the NASA budget in 1965, we will find that it was 4.3% of the total U.S. federal budget. And what is considered a huge number, let the Apollo mission have the equivalent of $264 billion of money this day available to it. And this is all, of course other than political, governmental, and media support. But what does this have to do with not returning to the moon again? First, the NASA budget at the present time represents about half a percent of the total U.S. budget. 
I mean NASA's budget in the 60s was nine times its current budget. This number is not enough to make safe trips to the moon. And put a line under the word safe, because we will return to it for a while. At the same time, the United States of America has proven its dominance in the space race for a long time. The issue has become settled, especially since the Soviet Union, which was their fierce competitor, was essentially dismantled in the year 1991. Thus, the Americans have no reason to spend huge sums of money again to travel to the moon. Now they can spend much less sums and achieve great achievements. I mean, you can imagine that the Apollo mission we talked about cost more than $264 billion. Money at the present time. While the James Webb Telescope, which was launched a few months ago and made a huge noise in the world, cost $10 billion. Even this 10 America did not pay it alone. This project has a partnership with 14 countries, including Austria, Belgium, Canada, Germany, and Britain. From a purely economic point of view, that we sent humans to the moon again is no longer important. Here, let us clarify an important point so that people can understand. Sending humans to the moon is completely different from sending machines. From 1972 until today, flights that carry instruments to the moon have not stopped. Every few years a country comes out and sends machines and nails there. In the year 2007, for example, Japan launched the Selene space probe, and then in 2008, India launched the Chandrayaan-1 spacecraft. And five years later in the year 2013, China sent the Chang-3 spacecraft, which landed on the moon successfully. Five years later, in 2018, they launched the Chang-4 spacecraft. Two years later, in the year 2020, they launched the Chang-5 spacecraft, which was able to take samples of the moon's stones and soil and return them. This means that the flights did not stop completely. Who stop but the journeys that carry people? Trips that carry machines are relatively easy and do not have many risks. This is in contrast to trips that carry people who need money like rice and a very great effort in order to provide very accurate safety precautions such as maintaining the temperature inside the vehicle, maintaining the pressure inside the vehicle, protecting people from radiation, and providing amount of oxygen and the provision of the necessary food, and the water needed for the duration of the flight, no matter how long it takes. All of these things are very complicated from the flight that carries humans. Rather, just getting rid of the astronauts' waste inside the spacecraft is complicated. However, after all these precautions, the missile carrying them in the first place could explode, or that the vehicle has a malfunction while it is in space. Instead of the task being a political victory for the state that will do it, it will be a disaster and a scandal. This is not, of course, the people who will die. That's all for today. Don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends. And also tell us in the comments section about ideas for upcoming videos.